bringing it back, bringing it to life. I've had people tell me that 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 in that area where you were at, and from all all over that hole, it's a pretty big area. But、um, I've heard people say that. Like I got a story. Some people were driving from where you were at to San Marcos, and they were from not from here. They were from, I believe,、uh, they were foreigners. They were from, Ar- I believe, Argentina. But they were driving and they were staying at a bed and breakfast, and they kind of got turned around. And they were, and this was like 20 years ago, and they were trying to find their way. And th- all they could tell me was they knew that they went from Dripping Springs to San Marcos. They ended up in San Marcos, and they were trying to find. A gr- I think they're going to Green. You know where Green is at, Anthony? Like、oh of, yeah, yeah, that's a nice place. Bronville's. That's what it was. And they and this was like back. GPS wasn't just like you just turn on GPS. This is like 1999 or something. And they were they were trying to find their way around. And I, I believe he was from Argentina, and she was. I think she was Mexican, like a Me- Mexican American. But she was American. But anyway, they argued back and forth, and literally, he made a comment like he goes, "Dude, this this is creepy." Like where they were at, it was like midnight, and he said something to the effect. I don't have the story right in front of me to look at it for reference, but I just remember this. And he said something like, "This looks like the place where a werewolf would kill you." Like he he just it popped into his head, you know. And his name was Manuel. I remember that. I don't remember her name. And I just remember the story, and, and it's something that I just I got an email from a long time ago. I need to go back and dig it up. And then right then, they drive over this creek, and there's this little bridge, and they look over to the right, and there in the creek bed was this creature squatted down, and it was a full moon, and they could see it because right there the tree there's a lot of canopy, you know, Anthony on that road,、um, on those back roads. And I don't know exactly where they were at because they got, like I said, they got turned around. This was years ago, and they see it stand up, and they were like, "No way!" <laughs> like they had just talked about it, so there could be something to that because you know, me and Anthony, when we we were growing up, the Ahova in particular, she would always be like, "Don't talk about this stuff. You're bringing it up." Yeah, and, and she would scare the crap out of us too. It was time to go to、uh, San Juan. To go light candles down at the mission, and my mother was no longer Catholic, but she was like, "Look, as long as she's alive, we're going to do what she wants." And I had to go to catechism, all this other stuff. So did Anthony. So we ended up like driving down to San Juan, and and I remember just her telling us these stories that would just scare the crap out of you. So by the time you got there, you were on your best behavior. You were lighting candles like crazy, <laughs> and you were just you know you were ready to behave. But I remember certain areas. That we went through,、um, she wouldn't talk about stuff during in, in those certain areas in the towns. Like once we got down into the valley, she would not talk about La Chusa, Brujeria, or any of that kind of stuff. And and you know what I'm talking about Anthony. Yeah, yeah. She was very、uh, superstitious in that way. And there were certain areas. Might have been Falfurious.、Uh, is it Falfurious? I think we want to look it up on the map. I think it's right before you get to Alice. Like when we would get toward that that town, I'm trying to remember which town it was. She would see, she's like she would be telling us something, and she would stop because the, and that town had a legend of the cadejo, the black dog, and she was like, we don't want to call it up and it come chasing our car. And I, my mom would roll her eyes like, oh yeah, okay, whatever, you know. But it, that was what she believed, and so you know, a belief is a powerful thing, you know. And if you were talking about this prior to that. Now the average person, what did it say? So Falfurious is south of Alice. South, just south of Alice, because yeah, okay. So once you got past Alice, she wouldn't talk about the Cadejo. It was like you know, because、yeah. there's a story in Falfurious of the of the black dog of you know. Maybe talking about these things is kind of is similar to like chumming the waters for sharks, sharks. you know, or throwing blood in the water, or whatever, bleeding in the water. It gives off a. A scent or like a signal to these things that oh I, I can I can get some energy over here yeah, yeah and, it like gives them power or、mm-hmm. something yeah you talking to your husband and him kind of going like ah、oh, yeah yeah it showed up and it kind of like when he put doubt when in the in the water he showed up to show you hey right this is real I'm real 
and I want you to know it. And these things do that. They, they send out this level of fear that comes off of you that's just unnatural. Yeah. I mean, people talk. I've had bouncers, a guy that worked at a bar out in the country, way out in the country. And uh, he was telling me he was like taking out the trash. This happened like up in Wisconsin, but it was like a bar out in the middle of nowhere. And he said he was taking out the trash. And he said he saw this Bigfoot type creature standing by the trash can. It literally closed the trash can lid and looked at him, had red eyes. He said it was looking right through me. And he was like about the size of your six foot seven. He's about the size of your husband. Big, big guy, though, real big dude. And um, he said that it looked at him like, like, I could kill you right now. And he said the fear he got from it, it seemed to make it smile. And then it just kind of left after it got what it wanted because several drunk patrons were coming out of the bar at that time. And he was like, oh, thank God, because he wasn't alone. But he told me he got the distinct feeling that this thing may hurt him if these people hadn't come pouring out of that bar. Now, the, he was by the – like the way the bar was made, he said it was like a side door he came out of. And the people were kind of coming out of the front and then going around to where he was at. And he was standing there scared to move. And this thing moved away from him. And I say, how tall was it? He said, eight, nine feet at least. He goes, I'm a big guy, but it was huge. And he th- he said, it looked menacing too. And it, it was sitting there with its mouth partway open. I and mean, you could see fangs, you know, but it, he said it looked squatch like big, big Bigfoot, you know. But th- I think these creatures do the same thing. I think they do produce fear. And I've heard stories of these people who I'm sure everybody's heard of like the Hollywoods and the elites, the stories of supposedly, and what they do is they try to generate fear, you know, um, not going to get into that, but you know, the whole thing is that does something. It does something that, 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 that gives these things some sort of energy, some sort of boost. And that doesn't mean that they're not going to kill you. There's this really bad, bad theory that is postulated on and thrown about and all the, well, you're alive because they don't kill people. And I hear these people talking like that all the time. And I'm like, you could not be more wrong. Why do so many people go missing in these national parks, state parks? Why do so many people have encounters with these things and they chase out, chase after them, you know, and do all kinds of crazy stuff, you know, to people you know, I mean, I could tell you three or four stories off the top of my head of the the one that you saw doing things that, that yeah, doing evil, bad things, hurting right. people and their pets and t- chasing after them. So, you know, th- it's very real and it's scary. And, and yeah, they do get some kind of energy from it. And I think that they, it, it, they want that release from you before they do what they do. And I think you're fortunate that Maybe because your husband was there or maybe because you have God with you. I don't know why it decided not to do whatever, but it could have been more, worse, much worse. I've had one of oh, these yeah. things like go through the back of someone's windshield and get stuck um, oh. yeah, up in Michigan. Yeah. And looking back on it too, the description of it sounds kind of like what you saw, you yeah. know, kind of bear like, you know, in the head and everything else. Cause I went back and I revisited that email with that particular witness. And he, he was, a, and he was, a, I did it on another show. I told that story and this kid, what happened was just to recap, he was, his, he had a bad home life and it was really sad talking to the guy. You could tell he was very poignant, you know, when he would talk, it was, you know, and, and his stepdad would lock him out of the house. So he got, he was staying at a friend's house and his mom and dad told him that he could stay there, but then he felt like he was wearing out his welcome. So he just decided to leave, if I remember the story correctly, and he ended up, there was an abandoned car where him and his friend would go and they would smoke pot, you know, and drink and stuff. They were in their late teens, you know, seniors in high school. And he he went to sleep in that abandoned car and this thing comes sniffing around, very werewolfish, but almost bear-like. And, and then that's what saved him. I think the bulk of this thing, tearing through the back window because it couldn't get in. It came through the back window, tried to attack him, and it got stuck in the back of this car. Now, why it chose to go through the back is like it kind of like it disappeared, and he had like a knife or something out, and he was waving it around. So I think maybe it was trying to hurt him, attack him, you know, and keep from getting hit by the knife. And these things are smart; they're not stupid. And so, you know, it, it jumped through the back windshield, I think, to try to like ambush him, and but it got stuck. And it was just, you know, the whole time, just, just in a frenzy, dude, and then slobbering and everything else. And 
what's really weird too, when I went back and I revisited that email, which when I told this story on this other person's show, that person didn't like anything woo, really. They didn't really like it on there. They wanted to put a narrative that it was all flesh and blood. So I went back and I, I read the email just the other day after me and you had our conver- our first conversation about this, Jenna. And what I read really shocked me because I forgot all about this aspect of that story. When him and his friends went back to look at that car, there was black ash, like soot all over it. Hmm. But he was convinced that this thing was cut and bleeding and they found blood too. Like there was dried blood. It was an old abandoned car and you know, it was full of black soot. Now, I don't know why that is. I don't know what that is. And of course the back seats were ripped to shreds. The, 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 the seats or whatever, you know, was all ripped to shreds from this creature. And I asked this guy, I said, are you sure that this wasn't a, uh, a bear? He said, no, it was bear. Like it was like, if you took a werewolf and beefed it up and made it look more like a, a bear. And so then I also, you know, there's this gugwe thing, you know, you, you know what that is. And so I'm like, it, it didn't look like this, did it? And I gave him a description of what the gugwe looked like. And he's like, he's like, no, yeah. no way, dude. He goes, this was a werewolf bear like creature, you know, and, and, and the show that I was on and it's, it's that guy's prerogative. He can say what he wants or talk about, you know, but he didn't really like any too much, too much. He let me do it a little more than others, but he was real big on not having that be a part of the show, especially in that stage of his show or whatever. I don't, I don't watch the show. I don't know anything about it now, but I just know that, you know, that was not something that I could really say. And if I did, it probably got, you know, taken out or whatever. But I just remember that, that when I read the email, I was like, oh man, this is, you know, a little more in depth. And then subsequently, like years later, you know, cause I emailed this guy and I got a response and he's, I asked him, I was like, I know that this happened to you. It was very traumatic. When he told me the story, that, I mean, he, he cried. There was no way he was going to be able to tell the story himself. And he wasn't really interested in revisiting it. And I said, look, I just want, I just have a question because there's other people who've seen what you saw. And he told me, he says, look, I've seen it again, oh, you know, God. since then. And he goes, and I'm convinced, this is what he said. He thinks that it's some sort of shapeshifter <laughs> because he thought that there was a, there's a guy that would walk up and down his road looking for cans. And one day, like shortly after that happened, he drove by and he saw this guy and the guy was all cut up. So I don't know. And then later on he saw in that same area where the guy would kind of move around and do what he did. He was like a derelict kind of homeless guy, whatever, um, lived out in the woods. And he said that, that, that he saw, this bear like creature, werewolf creature again, you know, and he thought it just popped in his head that it was that guy. Hmm. So I, I don't know if it's a werewolf, you know, or if it's something else. I, I, I don't know. I can't tell you, but, uh, it is food for thought, you know? And like I said, there have been cases of what you saw in that area too. And if people only knew like how desolate it can be, cause Texas is a big state, and as heavily populated it is around the cities, there's a lot of just barren areas. Like when this, when we're done recording, Anthony and I have to actually drive to my hometown, to my uncle's farm to go pick up a car. Now, once you get out there to the farm, there's nothing. That's 24 miles from here. And there's yeah. nothing. I mean, 24 yeah. miles is not that far. But once you get about 17 miles from here, Going east, which is through the city and through around, you know, there's nothing. You could get out of that car on the other side of Row Lane and you could walk around on that country road and a dog man could come up and snatch you up and, and you could scream as loud as you want for as loud as you want and nothing, no one's going to hear you. It's a horrific yeah. thought. But when we, me and my, my wife were, were, were working out there and she swears up and down, she saw a Bigfoot creature. I saw something from the side and I don't claim it as a Bigfoot encounter because I, I don't know what I saw, but she got a good look at it. And I told her, I said, honey, you know, th- th- this is a subdivision they're building, <laughs> but right there, it abuts right up against a cow pasture, <laughs> literally. And then if you go on the other side of that cow pasture, there's a few farms and a couple ranches out there, but that's it. 
If you go out into those fields or whatever and a pack of coyotes attacks you, which there was a 20 coyote pack out there. There was at least 20 of them. I'm not joking. They were huge pack out there. And I told my wife, I said, if those coyotes got a hold of you out there, they, they, no one would hear you. Yeah. And I remember something out there was freaking out those cows in that cow pasture. And it, it wasn't the coyotes because whenever they would make all that noise, you know, you, you would think if it was coyotes, you would hear the coyotes yipping and yapping. You didn't hear any, anything. You just heard them like losing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and we we were my wife became convinced that there was a Sasquatch out there, and one night we heard the coyotes just sounded like they were being murdered. I mean, it was like like they were just dying, and I was like, "What in the heck?" Now there were hogs out there too, and I have personally with my own eyes out there in the area where you were at, close to there. I've witnessed uh, hogs fighting with coyotes. It's a it's a crazy thing to watch, and I witnessed it. And I've seen it, you know, on the other side of Granger Lake uh, near my hometown of uh, Taylor, Texas. What I don't, what, what I don't understand and what I'm, you know, is how people, you know, can say, oh, well, these things don't exist, but they're not going out anywhere where these things are seen. And they'll say, well, right. you know, they, I've lived out here so-and-so for so, so long, but yeah, but you're at this one spot. You know, this thing's not going to just lay down on you unless maybe the Hernandez Ranch people and then... All those properties right there seem to be having the same issue, which not far from where you were at, like maybe 20 miles. Yeah. So I didn't even know that. Yeah. You were pretty close to the, you weren't at ground right. zero, but you were, I would say ground zero was right there where they were, where they are. You were probably on the Southern rim of it, but between here and, and Dripping Springs and just in Austin, we get a lot of weird reports out of bee caves. Um, those, those reports are not to be taken lightly because- you get so many of them and the farmers and ranchers out here just kind of look at it as I think it's just part of life. You know, there's just this weird phenomenon and they just deal with it, you know, but there are a ton of these things. And and I think you're just very fortunate that nothing worse came of it, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, in my head in, until it got laid out, I was like, there's, there's no way that, that, that was it. Like I, I just was, laid there wide awake waiting for something else to happen. I, I mean, it was, yeah. Well, well thank God nothing else did. Is right. that, is that the, and is that the final thing that's happened to you? Hopefully that's you know, um, for yeah, you. <laughs> I, <laughs> if I think of anything else, I'll have to call you again. But yeah, I think those are the, those are the main, main things. Um, yeah, that have happened to me in my life. I mean, I'm only 28, so hopefully, yeah. <laughs> That's enough. You're like, I don't want to, <laughs> you know. I've had uh, my fill. <laughs> yeah, you're like, you know, it's like everybody's always talking about how fun it is to go do all this daredevilish type stuff. And then after you do it once or twice, you're like, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I don't need to go bungee jump again. I don't need to, you know. I mean, once you've skydived a few times, it's, yeah, you're good. I mean, you know, you survived. And that's the cool thing about it. I used to like to ride roller coasters until I watched all these videos of people going flying off of them. And then you're just like, dude, I can't believe how many roller coasters I rode. You know, it's like, it's crazy, but I'm glad that you survived. I'm glad that, you know, you're alive. Thank God. And thank Jesus Christ that you're alive. And I, I'm, I'm just blown away by your encounter, but you know, I don't know how to say it. If it's, if it's unfortunate or sad, or if it's, fortunate i get maybe i don't know how the wording would be but other people it's happened to other people so just remember you're not crazy you know there, there's yeah. another one that happened not far from there at all and it was her and her son and her son ended up in therapy for it yeah yeah no it definitely made me feel better to hear that someone else saw something similar and yeah it, it just just crazy because you kind of you know you, you get like an image in your head of okay you know if you know, I've, I've heard so many stories and, you know, you, you just get an image in your head of what you, you think it's going to look like. And immediately my mind just said to myself, that's not what I pictured them to look like, like verbatim. That is what I thought in my head as soon as I saw that. And it just bizarre. Here's one last thing I wanted to say, but, you know, I put some thought into this too, about the black soot thing that, that comes up and Anthony you've heard this several times I wonder because you know we're, we're carbon based life forms right and 
if there is some sort of shape shifting going on here with these creatures, not maybe not all of them, but some of them, whatever, then them altering their shape, you know. So do you think the, that that's like a byproduct or like a waste product of, yeah, of I a do. shape shifting process? I do because if you remember, Theohova used to talk about the the manos peludos, you know, the, and then the different stories, like the, the stories they would talk about. Like she would talk about how when the the cadejo or the uh, lachusa <clears throat> that sometimes they would see like a black cloud or smoke around it, and I would hear like her her boyfriend, um, the Richard, he was from Mexico, and he was from down south of Monterrey, and I remember him talking. One time we all went to go eat at Sizzler. <laughs> I remember Sizzler was like, you know, Anthony, that don't really exist anymore down here, but you probably don't know. before my time. Before your time, but it was like going to Sizzler. It was like a big deal, you know? And we were talking and they started talking about spooky, scary stuff, which as a kid, I didn't really like it. It scared the crap out of me. But Richard was one of those who liked to tell scary stories and Thea would always get on to him like, don't tell the kids that you're going to scare them. It, she would tell just as terrifying stories. So I just thought that was kind of hypocritical. And he's like, oh, you're always telling them about the manos paludos and La Chusa, what, you know, La Llorona. And I remember that came up about the the black soot. So we went to mass, you know, the, the Christmas Eve mass. And like I said, I'm not Catholic, but when I was a kid, I had to be Catholic for my grandmother on my mom's, on my dad's side. And then that was my mom, my grandmother's sister, my tia Hova. Uh, tia means aunt in Spanish. She's my great aunt, but she was kind of like my surrogate grandmother because my grandma, my mom's mom died. Um, on Anthony, the day that you were born, like not the day you were born, but December 19th, yeah. she passed away when I was like not even two years old. So, you know, and I was the last person that she held from the family um, was me. And then she passed away. But uh, so Theohova, her sister kind of was like my grandmother. So I spent a lot of time with her. And so one Christmas Eve, I, I was there and I had to go to mass. And so I asked the the one of the priests that was there doing the services after because he was very good friends with my aunt because she probably gave him half her money. She was so religious. And I asked a question about that. And I said, I asked this priest, I said, do demons, are they real? And he kind of smiled and goes, yes, but, but not on Christmas Eve. <laughs> and he kind of patted me on the head and I said, really? And I was aggravated by that answer. So on the way home, I asked Thea and, and her boyfriend at the time, and I, I said, what, what, is, what is this guy he's talking about? They're, they're, they're not real on Christmas Eve. And, you know, they were like, well, nothing bad happens on Christmas Eve. They're trying to cheer me up, whatever. The next day we drove back, to, back into Taylor and we all had Christmas at my mom and dad's house, whatever. And I asked the question, I said, are they real on Christmas? You know, I asked it again. And we're all sitting at the dinner table. And everybody's like, why are you talking about this? And I'm like, because I'm just curious, like, because these stories you hear, but one thing that now as an adult, I know that these things tend to be very active between the months of September to January. If you look at the Dogman reports, a lot of them happen at that time, even though a lot more people seem to be out in the summertime moving around, maybe they don't see them because they're able to hide in the foliage because it's, you know. And then maybe when the leaves are falling, like in the fall, maybe that's why people see them. And then in the wintertime, maybe they hibernate or something. I don't know. But it's something that I went over with Linda God for years ago. Like, why do, are these things seen at certain times of the year? And then they're, and then that just seems to be when they're seen. And it's, it's very interesting. What time, and what time of year was it that your friend's uh, mother saw? Uh, January. Ah. It was New Year's. Yeah. There you, you go. Very, yeah. very odd. And then it kind of tapers off. And and years ago, me and my brother, we made a map and we and we used the devil's backbone here in Texas as kind of like, you know, at the template. And we and we put the dogman stories in red and the Bigfoot stories in blue. And we were like, look, let's let's go through this map and let's see, you know, which ones are which, you know. And we started to see like the one side of the devil's backbone was full of squatch activity. The other side was uh, Dogman, but then right there in this alley, the alleyway kind of in, more toward the east, but it, it was called the Haunted Valley, and they were, they were kind of intermingled, and that area seems to be, and it, me and Dave Willie talked about on the live stream, 
It's an area of high strangeness where people see like, you know, people walking around with muskets and coonskin hats and Confederate soldiers and Spaniard soldiers and all kinds of different phenomena that seems like it just walked right out of time. Comanches and Apaches. And maybe that's why you, those are seen there. But uh, yeah. So one of the stories I got out of the backbone, which was I thought was intriguing, and this happened to one of my ex-girlfriends. I went camping out there years ago. And they, they talked me into it. I was already, I don't, I didn't like going out there at night, but I did it several times. I don't know why. Um, because people talked me this into it. saying, don't go. Yeah. <laughs> they kind of talked me into it. And I, and I just, you know, I ended up having some weird stuff happen. But the Haunted Valley, there was an area and there was a guy named James. who was a good friend of my uh, ex-girlfriend's uh, roommate. And I think he kind of had a crush on her or whatever, but I guess she was kind of out of his league. But he was kind of just always around that kind of guy, but he was nice, he was harmless. Um, but he told me one time when it was brought up at a, like a little house party, they're like, Hey, you know, Wolf got his nickname, this guy, Trey, that I was friends with. He, he went to Texas state, it was called Southwest Texas state at that time in San Marcos. And he said, Wolf saw a werewolf. That's why he got his nickname. It's not because he's always downtown fighting with everybody and blah, blah, blah. And everybody kind of thought that was funny. They laughed, you know? And then I was like, why are you telling people that? He goes, well, James claims to have seen a werewolf out of Devil's Backbone. And so I asked him about the story and, and not too long ago, um, I would say not too long ago being the day after I talked to you, <laughs> uh, the first time we corresponded or whatever. And he, he kind of, he gave me a messenger version of the story, but I remember what he told us that night. And when you go back and you compare notes to what he saw, I never thought it was like, like, it honestly, it sounded like a bear. Like, I just thought it was a bear. But the way that this thing uh, came out of nowhere was the most shocking part of the story. But he said he was walking along with this female friend of his, and I guess somebody that he was interested in, he liked, whatever, like I said, he was a socially awkward guy. And she confirmed it because a couple of days after the party, I saw her at this place where my girlfriend at the time liked to go eat and, and she would after, after class or whatever, and I would meet her there and we would eat and whatever. This, this guy, he told us that what he saw come out of this, what looked like a portal, like he saw they, him and this girl, they saw like this blurry, I don't know what it was, just like a blurry, it looked like water floating in midair. And he said that this arm, what looked like an arm came out once or twice and they were just terrified. They were like, what is that? And it's right in the middle of this trail. And then they were, were getting closer to it. So she's like, let's turn around and go back. It's already starting to get dark anyway. And it's going to be dark by the time we get back to the Jeep or the Cherokee, whatever. And he says, okay. So they go to turn back around and this happened like years ago, like back in the you know nineties, whatever. And he said that as they turned around, they see on all fours what looks like a bear, not but not like a big grizzly bear. It looked like something that had elongated arms and legs. And I said, like, maybe a Kodiak. He didn't really know what that was. Like, he didn't know the difference. And so I explained it to him. I said, they're found on Kodiak Island in Alaska, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, yeah, maybe kind of like that. But then it stood up on its hind legs and it walked around. And he said it didn't pursue us. It didn't come after us. It just kind of walked around and then it just walked off into the woods. And he said that it stood straight up, like its back was straight up and down, which is not what bears do. And so I asked him, I said, look, I told him part of, part of what I had seen when I was 15. He said it kind of looked like that, but it was brown. And he said that the head was very rounded, but it did have pointy ears. So I asked him, I said, dude, so what do you, what you saw, if it wasn't a bear, but it looked like a bear, was it a werewolf? And I asked him that at the party and then he kind of reiterated it in the e the email. And he said, yeah, yeah, kind of like a werewolf, but like bulkier than you would imagine like a werewolf to be. So that very much fits a description of bear man, were bear, whatever it is that you saw, you know, right. and, and so, but it was brown and, 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 and he, he saw the ears. They didn't see a tail. So there again, that kind of like without the tail, well, kind of looks like a gugwee maybe, 
Because he said that the, the way it moved was very much like human looking, the way it moved, especially when they saw it from the side. It didn't have the bulky gut that hangs down from a, for a bear. When you saw what you saw, did, did you see the, the stomach or anything like that? I honestly, I did not see anything besides just the, the face, the snout. Yeah. And like, so dark that I couldn't see above, you know, looking at its eyes, like what the ears looked like. It was just, it was tall and I could, I could tell it was wide from the, the width of the head. I could tell the body must've been, you know, four times that width because if the head was almost two feet wide itself, it had to be, yeah, huge. Jeez. That sounds like the God bear, the Kamchatka. Kamchatka. Like it, and it sounds kind of silly to say, to say, but it looked stoic, like standing there, like just kind of wise and like, don't, I just keep going back to this, but like, don't question if we're real or not, because we are like, I'm showing you that we're real. It, and it wasn't, it wasn't menacing. It wasn't um, like, you, obviously you could feel the evil from it. But it wasn't, you know, like when you think of werewolf, you think fangs and you think growling and you think like mouth open and like saliva coming out. Like that's, that's what I consider to be like menacing. And it, 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 and it wasn't anything like that. Its mouth was closed. You could distinctly see the short snout and just the, I keep saying it, but just the, the frown of the shape of, you know, the angle of how the mouth went down. It's just burned into my brain. Yeah, that's weird. And, you know, going back and rereading that person's encounter and it jogged my memory of that, you know, because that was an encounter that I'd kind of like just forgotten about because I thought, you know, it sounds like a bear, you know what I mean? And, And I was so guarded, especially in the beginning, in the early goings of the show. And even when I was on the other shows, I didn't really want to talk about these cases. Because they didn't fit in, and it's shame on me for that, because I didn't fit in. It didn't look like what I saw. It didn't right. look as werewolfish. You know, it, how do you, I don't know how to say it. Like, it really gets me going now thinking about all these cases that I'd gotten that, that maybe going back, if you look at them now, one in particular stands out. I'll tell you another one. And this is another one I, I researched subsequently after talking to you. And and then Guadalupe, this other lady that saw the one, I'm going to tell that story too. This one was weird. Um, and this one happened in, in the same area, close to where you were at, near Wimberley. And Wimberley okay. has a lot of weird stories out of there too. If if you go, it was coming, for, I forgot the name, I wish Anthony stepped out for a second, but the highway, and like I said, my phone's not working, it's like on the fritz, but anyway... There's a highway that comes in from the west going into Wimberley, and I can't remember what that is. I don't think that's Ranch Road 12. But anyway, it, they, they were coming from the west, and I remember distinctly th- this story. And they saw the guy the guy and his teenage son saw what they thought. Well, his son was 19. He wasn't like a little teenage kid, you know. Okay. But they were coming back from turkey hunting, and they were coming back into town and they they had been way out somewhere like junction or something i don't know but they they were coming back and it was november i remember that and it was it was kind of you know and they i believe they were hunting turkey or something i can't remember exactly what it was i know it wasn't deer it was something else and i don't have the story right in front of me but i do distinctly remember them telling this story and i remember the guy's name was isaiah and they were they were coming back into town and they lived on the other side of wimberley and they were a couple miles from the city limits, and it was nighttime, like nine o'clock at night, and there was traffic. I mean, there were people driving back and forth. It wasn't like there was some desolate, you know, road, whatever. And they just see what looks like a bear, like a bear, or they described it to me as a bear, stand up on its hind legs and just walk across the road in front. And, and there, it was far enough away to where it didn't have to run across the road. And they were like, is that a bear? Is that a man in a bear costume? Or what is that? 
And what made it even more bear-like was, you know how bears have that little short, stubby tail? Mm-hmm. I mean, that and the rounded ears, you know, and the way that it, you know, that it, it's built, it's very distinct from a wolf. I mean, you oh, can yeah. tell a bear and a wolf, you put them together, you're like, that's a bear, that's a wolf. It's like the mm-hmm. difference between a gorilla and a chimp. You can look at this vast difference between the two. And, and and so his son was like, maybe it's a werewolf. And his dad was the, the dad, Isaiah, was like, no. No, look at the tail. That's a, that's a bear. But it's walking like a man. And now right. the, the average person will tell you, oh, well, you know, it's a bear, you know, can walk around on his hind legs. Yeah, but not just casually, casually strolling across the highway. No, it's like, going to go on if it's going to do anything. Yeah, and then it's it, it's going to go a couple steps and then go back down on all fours because that's how it's built. That's right. how it's made. It's made to walk like that. So what this guy and his son saw, I have I have no way to know for sure. But I do have a bit of an idea uh, that, that it could be, you know, this were bear, man, bear looking thing. It turned its head briefly and looked at them and then kind of looked down at the ground like it was casually just looking down at the ground and it moved its hands up and down and kind of went back down. When he said hands, I said, wait, wait, whoa. I was like, okay, now we're talking, you know? And I was like, hands that kind of tastes like, oh, it's got, you know, it's human like. And he said, oh yeah. He said it was bear like, but the shoulders kind of rounded up like a man, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that w- it wasn't completely furry. It was almost hairy and then a mixture of fur and hair. And he was trying to describe it to me, you know, and he, as it was brownish red or reddish brown. I think he said it was reddish brown. And I remember him describing the hands, but kind of the way the hands, when he described them, reminds me of how people describe the dog man's hands, like kind of raccoonish, you know, mm-hmm. and, and less manlike. Kind of like paws, but it had, and it had short, stubby fingers with these claws. And he said, but it, the, the claws, the way that they curved and the way they looked were very reminiscent of a bear's claws. And I asked him, I said, how tall? He said, probably seven, eight feet. And no way, shape or form, was he willing to say that that could have possibly been just a human in a costume. Yeah. And what would it have been doing just at two or three miles outside the city limits and just there? Right. Who who does that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> question you have yeah. to ask is who who's going to dress up in a bear costume and just stand by the side of the road and walk across the street in the middle of a highway? Like, okay, practically who's going to do that and for what? Yeah, there's no reason for that. And so when when he in, in, you know saw this thing or encountered it, you know, it was just like it was it was just it was shocking, and then it just moved. And there was another truck that was coming on the other side that was coming, you know, and he was like, dude, that other truck had to have seen it because as it got to the other side and went into the woods, that truck slowed way down. And he goes, I remember passing that truck and I was kind of looking over at each other and going like, what the heck was that? Like they saw it too, (laughs) you know, I mean, it was years ago, but I mean, it was just, I remember going back into the archives and look, I have so many stories and some of these, you don't really know where to place them, you know, especially when people tell me stories about these bear type creatures. I kept going, okay, but if I tell the story about a bear type creature, people are automatically going to say it's a bear. But this happened. Folks, I'm telling you, Central Texas is not known for bears, you know, but I get people, you know, when when you talk about werewolves, I've told stories, you know, people seeing things, you know, on the river, on the Camal, on the Guadalupe, and then they'll be like, oh yeah, well, that, that had to be a bear. And I'm like, what? Like, you know, it sounds like a freaking werewolf from the howling and you're telling me it's a bear, you know, but that seems to be the go-to with Bigfoot too. They'll be like, yeah, you saw Bigfoot. That was a bear. I haven't even told you the story yet. Well, I already know. Um, I'm also psychic and it's a bear, you know, and you're like, oh, I thought you didn't believe in anything. Well, I don't, I'm not even believing that I exist. You know, people, (laughs) people just get so. You know, they're so stuck in their paradigm of what they want it to be. They just can't let it shift any other way. And you get these researchers like David Wedley said on my show, you know, on the live stream, he's like, they need to dial it back, you know, Mm -hmm. dial it back a bit so we can get some answers here because there's no clarity that's going to be found and people just completely 
just bashing people who see something that doesn't fit their paradigm. You know, yes, Carl I mean, Sagan once said that, you know, we should not only look for, for life as we know it, but we should look for life as we don't even understand it. And, and you know, that always, that quote always stuck with me because I always thought, dude, nature is going to be the way it is. And we don't know squat about the nature of our reality. You know, I had a guy who had a near death experience and he saw all these weird honeycomb I've probably talked about it on the show before and he saw these weird patterns and he saw like things moving out of these, these, these geometric shapes and patterns. And when you go down the rabbit hole, you start to go like, what the heck is that? Like what, you know, like then he comes back to, to, to they bring him back to life. Cause I guess he was technically dead and he was walking, he was wandering around a hotel. Well, <clears throat> if you just heard one person tell you that story, you're going like, well, that's crazy. You know, that's nuts. But then when you hear half a dozen people repeat the same thing, seeing geometric shapes, octagonal, weird triangles, inverted, different symbols, and, so, and you're like, what is this? And then they see these weird machine elf looking things, which look kind of like what we were talking about a couple of episodes back with Jenna, you know, like the, the little Duendes, you know, what are they? Or right. Why are they? You know, like what, what is going on here? I mean, you know, and, and so one of the freakiest stories I got too. now, here's something I'll throw this one in here too. This was a woman who had an NDE and this happened in Iowa when she was a child, she literally got run over by a tractor and it broke like, I think 27 bones in her body or something. And the doctors were like, well, she's never going to walk again because the doctors are always very optimistic. They're like, she's dead. Oh, she's alive. Well, she's never going to walk again or talk. Oh, she's talking. Well, her speech is going to be messed up. Her speech is okay. Well, she's blind. No, she could see. Well, she's going to be deaf. They'll find something. The doctors, you go in there for, you know, high blood pressure and you come out with diabetes and everything else. But (laughs) it's like this poor girl that the prognosis was bad. And but the doctors always do that. And her parents, literally, they were people of faith. And they were just like, we're determined that she's going to to walk and talk and whatever. Her name was Mary. And she eventually did. Um, and when she was able to, she 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 spoke, you know, and she told her brother um, and a cousin her near-death experience. Now, she eventually, she passed away. She was paralyzed from the waist down. She It's weird because she did learn to, to walk again, but then something happened, like she got hit like a car or something years later. And it, there was, it was just like a breath away from being paralyzed already. And then she got like, I think like reap, like it, like hit her spine or whatever and and severed whatever. So she couldn't, she was paralyzed from the waist down from the time she was like in her twenties after that. Cause she got run over by a track when she was a kid. And this story was given to me by her brother. And then I I later got the, the cousin. But one of the things that she saw when she died, the point of the story, was a talking bear. I thought that was very interesting because she, she, when she passed over, she was a little child and she had this, which, you know, could have tempered her thoughts or whatever, because who knows? They say that, you know, you're flooded with what is a DMT when you're, when you're. Oh yeah. But whenever you uh, pass. pass over. So she may have just been, been flooded with that, but she had this bear that she, that she loved very, you know, so I asked him, I said, did she say what kind of bear this was? Because was it a talking bear, like a teddy bear, you know, could have been her teddy bear, you know? And they were like, no, she was very adamant that this bear came and sat down on the log next to her that looked like a, a person mixed with the bear. Like it was a bear man, bear person. And it spoke through to her through like this mind speak, whatever. And it told her, you know, like basically – well, you're okay. It's going to be okay. You're going to be here with me for a little while, and then you're going to go back to your body. And she asked, who are you? And he gave this weird name um, that was like some Greek name, but she couldn't pronounce it. And he said, just think of me as a protector of this area where you're at. This is where, you know, this is where I'm from, this area right here. And he's like, I can make myself go into your world or I, you, you're now in my world. 
But I thought that was interesting that this thing, and then he said, now it's time for you to go. And this thing began to turn yellow and kind of fold up and then it sparkled and disappeared. And this voice that she described as like Christ-like said, Mary, it's time to go. You need to come back. Okay. And then she woke up in excruciating pain. And so she told that story. Um, and one of the people, thank goodness, that that the cousin's sons actually listened to my show, you know, and said, Hey, I got a weird story that this happened, you know, uh, to my cousin, you know, when she and she died years ago, but she had a near death experience and she never really talked about it other than to a few family members and, and she got ridiculed. But I thought it was very interesting that this spirit came to her as a bear. Now, if you go to uh, Josh Nokio and and just watch, I encourage everyone to go watch this episode. It was one of the episodes he talks about these bear people. It's on the Yellowstone. Um, and it's my friend Josh Nokio's show, What Lurks Beneath. He'll be at the conference, by the way, folks. So if you, ever, if you guys want to go to the conference and you want to pick his brain, he'll tell you. Um, but I've had conversations with him about this. And these bear people that were being seen in Yellowstone and, and they weren't all bad. There were some that were doing bad things, but there was this one guy that was kidnapped by these bear men and they fed him. Who knows what they fed him, but, uh, he ate, they gave him water and then eventually they let him go. But, you know, there was this one story where, uh, a child was taken by one of these things and it was the same thing. It just like kind of protected it and let it sleep with it until the next day. And then it let it go. And he, when it heard the people coming to look for it, and I can't remember what book that was in. I don't want to misquote and say who, who, where I read that, but I just read that story. And th there was another one where there was a little boy and a little girl and they talked about a bear person. Some people say it was a Bigfoot. Some people argue and say it was a dog man. Some people say it was a bear man. I don't know what it was. But these things can be extremely sinister too. And I'll give you I'll give you an example. I'll give you a story. And this one happened to a, a woman named Lupe, uh, Guadalupe. You know, but it's 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 really it's really weird. She was driving into Dripping Springs, so she, they're coming in on two ninety, and I believe that they were heading in from the south, going into Wimberley. So th they were driving into town, you know, on two ninety, and her and her son Nick, they look over. And they see, he says, mom, look at that. Is that a, is that a bear? And she was like, that looks like a bear. And she's like, mijo, look away. Because it was in the middle of dinner and it had killed what looked like a deer and the deer was, it was fresh. Like it was, I'm not going to get into graphic detail here. It was, it had unalived this deer. Let's put it that way. It wasn't a roadkill. And so it was on the side of the road and it was late at night, like, like, I don't know, two or three in the morning and they were driving along and this happened not too long ago. I think it was 2018 or something like that. Maybe it's 2017, but anyway, they were driving along and they see this thing on the side of the road and it turns and it looks up at them and its face was bloody. And the, the, her son, who was like 16, you know, he saw it at the time he was 16, he saw it dead on and he said that it spoke to him and it's in his mind, like went into his mind, like literally and was like, you see what I can do. I can do this to you. Like literally told him that like he's did. That's the, the impression of the words that he got in his head. And it just stuck with him to the point where he had to go to therapy. Um, he ended up with a counselor and all kinds of stuff. And, he would have nightmares and the mother didn't fare much better. She felt like she was going to have a nervous breakdown and felt like this thing kind of stalked them. And what I mean by that, like not necessarily like this thing showed up and they saw it, but they would be out and about and they would feel it like it was watching them or it knew who, you know, who they were. And even walking around town in South Austin one time, her son got so freaked out. Uh, they were in Buda at, at this little festival and he had to run back to the car and sit in the car because he thought that one of the people that was there was that creature that was staring at him. So it, it got really bad for them. And I don't take these, these accounts lightly. When this thing, after they saw it, as they were driving up to it, it stood up. When it stood up, it had human-like shoulders. 
different than a bear. Bear's shoulders don't look anything like a human's. And the legs looked sort of straight up and down, kind of like a man's. Didn't have bear-like legs. And then it kind of squatted back down and kind of rested its arms on its, uh, yeah, had arms, not legs, upper, upper body, on its knees, sitting like, not like how a wolf or bear would sit. But the ears there were triangular, not rounded like a bear's, and its head, its face was rounded. And the snout was all bloody from what it was, you know, from its business. Um, killing is its business and business is good, obviously. There's a lot of deer out there. But it basically told, you know, the, the, the premise of what it told him was just, I can do this to you. And it freaked him out so bad. And this guy, like she said, he started doing bad in school. He started having all kinds of problems, um, emotional problems. And he became very short with people and him and his dad started fighting a lot. And she had to like kind of step in and mediate. And she's like, I, and she said it too. She was like, he's never been like a mama's boy, you know? Him and his dad got along very good, but when the dad wanted to take him fishing, he didn't want to go. He wanted to take him hunting. He didn't want to go. Um, his mother's Hispanic. His, dad, his dad's white. Same situation as me. And he had this uh, really close relationship with his dad that kind of dissolved because they, he didn't want to do anything outside. And where they lived, you know, they had a bunch of woods around their house and he didn't want to be in the backyard even. And he got in trouble because he would bring their German shepherd into the house to sleep with him in his, his in the room for two reasons. One, to protect him. They could protect each other. And then he didn't want to be an outside because he's afraid this thing was going to kill it. So he felt like he was being stalked by this thing. And he had these horrific nightmares, which I did too. Because what I saw, I was 15. And he had all these nightmares and things that were going on. And he was just like, I can't, I can't handle this. You know, it's just terrible. So, you know, you get these stories of these creatures and that's why I told you it's not you, you know, you're not alone. You know what I mean? Like it's not, you're, you're not the lone ranger here. You know, you have other people who've had encounters with these bear type creatures, entities, whatever. And I don't think it gets enough press. And, and I think because the fear is that people will go, well, if you say bear, then people are going to say, well, yeah, I was a bear because it's a right. large furry mammal. You know, when you say wolf, it's a little different. It's smaller. And if it's giant and standing on its hind legs and it looks like a were werewolf, then it's a werewolf. Right. Because people know werewolves. So. Mm -hmm. But the bear wolf, bear, or bear wolf, the bear, well, whatever, you, bear wolf too. I mean, but this bear like creature, here, here, here's food for thought. And, and I'll say this. What if, and I'm going to ask you, uh, Anthony. And, and, uh, Jenna, bo both of you, there's never been like, I mean, are, are, there's always been a precedent for an, an, anth anthropomorphic. Is that the right word? Am I saying it, Greg? I'm, yeah. Anthropomorphic. I'm over here like fumbling for words. Anthropomorphic beings, you know, there's always been a precedent for that. You know, he goes back to the Minoans and the Minotaur and all that. And I've talked about on the show about, about the, the, the legends, the Sumerian legends of Tiamat and how she wanted revenge on, Marduk, her son, for killing her husband. And so she created these different beings, you know, the merman, the, the hairy one, which is the Bigfoot. They all came from this anger that she had. And Tiamat's often described as a dragon itself, you know. And she waged war with these uh, chimeric creatures or whatever. That's one way to explain what they are. We don't know if they were created that way and who are these gods? Were they aliens? We don't know. But when you think about it in, in those terms that these things may be ancient beings that have been around for a long, long time, they're not all going to be the same. And you're going to have different species and different types. And, you know, why not a bear man? If you have a, were a, a, a werewolf, why not a, a werebear? And I think that th that it gets overlooked, like I said, because it's so close to looking like a bear anyway, you know, because it's large, if it stands on its hind legs, you know, if you've ever seen a sickly or shaved bear, you know, they look really weird. They look scary as hell. I mean, I don't know. And, and I just think maybe when, when we start going down the rabbit hole with these creatures, 
it just makes sense that you're going to see them. And somewhere down the line, maybe someone did take a gorilla and mix it with a bear and make barilla, you know, maybe they did take a wolf and, and mix it with human DNA and maybe throw bear in there too, to bulk it up. You know, I heard of, of the, of a, of a, the Japanese scientist l- recently making a Pikachu. Now you can look this up. Some people say it's fake. I don't know. I just heard that, that they had been working on it and they wanted to market these to children. It was an idea but the things were extremely aggressive and mean, and they use like uh, different DNA. They tried different types, like they tried using like hamsters and chinchillas, ch- or chinchillas, whatever. And they even tried to give it like electric ill DNA so that it would shock you, you know. And supposedly they would attack children. Now you can look this up. I'm telling you, I read this, but I, I, there again, I did, it was on the news feed, and I just I didn't get to read like in depth into it. But and it sounds so silly. But it's like when Garitano was on my show and he talked about the guy that was on 60 Minutes or 2020, whatever, and Diane Sawyer is like telling him, well, this is very irresponsible of you to make these, you know, cloning and the chimeric, whatever. And she's like, why would you do that? He says, because I can. Because it's human nature, you know, like, well, why not? I want to make tiger people. Yeah, I think they just want to see how far they can push things. Yeah. So, I mean... You know, and 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 and, and then it, t- it gets even more convoluted because what? Where is the soul in all of this? And if what you saw, Jenna, was a bear man, then then what if it can manifest in different ways and be physical and then be not physical? But then what if it is physical? Then it dies, and then what you're seeing is the ghost of this thing. Because sometimes, like like we talked about on a previous episode with the. The, the kids that were driving from Ontario to Rochester, and then they ended up this thing going through their windshield, but it was like a spongy whatever. I mean, you know, you go down the rabbit hole of this, it just gets really, you know, weird and kind of convoluted. I don't know exactly what you saw. I don't know what these other people saw or why they saw what they saw, but it is interesting. It's very interesting. Jenna, uh, I appreciate your time and, and sticking with us through this third episode and I, you know, that's all for, for, for tonight folks. And we appreciate you joining us. Uh, we, we've enjoyed having Jenna on as a guest and as a sort of co-host kind of sitting in on this last episode here. And, uh, from everyone here at PRT, Anthony, Jenna, you want to say goodbye? Do you have any uh, final thoughts? You want to say anything in, in conclusion, either one of y'all? Well, just thanks for having me. And it was great to talk about it and share what I experienced and hopefully maybe it'll resonate with other people who've had experiences that kind of like me didn't really know, you know, if they should come forward and talk about it. Cause it doesn't really fall under the exact narrative of what we're used to seeing, but I mean, it's definitely out there. It's definitely real. Yeah. And one last thing I was going to ask before we run, did you compare notes with your friend's mom about what you saw compared to what she saw? I have not yet, yeah. but I definitely can do that and I can get back to you. And then maybe you could come on the live stream or something and, and sure. tell me what you found, you know? Yeah. And I can have her um, retell that account as well. Cause that happened. Geez. I think that was like three years ago. So, and, and I don't,